now tuning in to the moon. The moon. The moon. The moon's best podcast. Funky dog head, bitch. Look at this. Hold on. Five ye long years they kept me locked away, trapped, but not forgotten. <laughs> Hire me. Awake, but dreaming. They tried to make me a prisoner, but the real prisoners are those trapped by their own minds. Bro, you were just staying in the Hotel Six. No. Why did I do this? I don't know. You tell us. I don't know, man. Um. Lots happened. You know what I was thinking about? What? I was thinking about how I think bare knuckle boxing is going to be the next big thing. uh, Solely because you can watch a bunch of girls beat the shit out of each other. Find them on Instagram. And so far, all of the main acts I found all do OnlyFans. Have you like looked at the content? Do they actually post nudes or is it just I like checked. their training stuff and like them like on a motorcycle or like on a mm. bi- like wearing a bikini? It might be that, but the pictures are all of them in lingerie and like risque. Okay. Hmm. But I mean it's not a bad model. Yeah, well, I don't know, just the way the UFC's been paying fighters, like no matter what Dana White says, there are enough fighters that are upset about their pay that it's obviously an issue. And there are other solutions that keep popping up for fighters, right? Like more and more leagues are starting to pop up and actually gain popularity now. Yeah, but I've watched, I don't know, I think two or three UFC pay-per-views. I've never bought a Strike Force. I've never bought a Bellator, I've never bought a PFL, and I've never had an inkling to buy any of those. Yeah, Bellator has a lot of their fights online, too, like on YouTube. Like, I would never pay for a pay-per-view for any of those, because I don't know who the fuck any of those people are. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know, having fight pass is kind of nice, because if you just have people over, you could be like, uh... Let's watch some people kick the shit out of each other. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure even for Fight Pass, like, it doesn't actually cover the fight nights. You still have to buy the paper. It covers some of the stuff. It depends on it what. It covers, like, the prelims, but the actual fight, you have to buy. Mm. Like, it's fucking stupid. I think you get a bit of a discount. True. But, like, if Fight Pass actually came with, like, a couple free fight nights, then But it if would it's, be like, it. the same price as Netflix, you know, like, it's... it's I nah. think it's more. I think it's, like... It's, like, 10 bucks a month or something Yeah, like it's, that. like, 135 a year. Oh. Yeah, the, the fact you still have to pay full, like... Well, more or less full price for pay-per-views is bullshit. Yeah, it's very annoying. Like, I'm pretty sure... Like, back before, like, there were, like, full fights. Like, they had, like, a deal with ESPN or TSN, and they would, like, actually have, like, pay-per-view fights on those channels. True. And now they don't do that anymore. Yeah. Huh. That's too bad. But I think it was too... I think they're trying to... I Like, it would make sense... Like, it makes more money for them if they're doing a pay-per-view, but you would think they would do that to pay their fighters more, but really they just increased their profit and lowered their bottom line. Yeah. What do you think about it? Bare knuckle. Um, I think it's definitely just going to keep gaining momentum, especially since you just have like a bunch of baddies like beating the shit out of each other, mm-hmm. you know, like, Who doesn't want to watch that? Not just that. Like, the dudes are just absolute animals. Yeah, they're usually just, like, more savage and crazy in general. Because, like, typically, you know, in the UFC, you might have guys that were attracted for the sport and, like, the science of it. But, like, I don't think there's going to be a dude in bare knuckle that's there to, like, you know, have fun. Like, he's there because he wants to beat the shit out of a dude. Yeah. 
It'd be interesting to see like more the evolution technical of it. fighters get into that scene too, and like you just think like they would though. Yeah, I don't. Because there's why more money to be made in like professional boxing or professional MMA. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like if you're in that, you're there for a reason. You're there because you're not like you're there because you're you're there to prove something, but like, you're not there to fuck around. Yeah. I mean, it's still the same business with getting deals and sponsorships, though. Like, I guess so, yeah. BFK is pretty, pretty good. Or BKFC. Or... Yeah, yeah, BKFC, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Yeah. It's based out of the UK, isn't it? I'm not 100% sure. Mm. Oh. What are you drinking? I'm drinking... Um, Lazashk, uh, beer product of uh, Produit de Pologne by Brower Lazashk. It's a Polish beer. How's that treating you? It's pretty good. How's that beer that I told you to get? So it's Hacker Pistor, um, the Muncher. <laughs> gold it's a traditional munich lager that's filtered brewed in germany it's pretty good mm, i really like that one yeah it's nice definitely goes down smooth i wanted to uh wanted to talk about vault 7 okay and all those leaks i have it all on this computer yeah if you want to check out any of the specific ones so i'm pretty sure after midnight is like a post-exploitation tool that they made so what like, i wanted to touch on is you know because of snowden and because of vault 7 um you know the cia it really isn't a conspiracy anymore you know because before people be like oh like big brother like they're listening to your phone like they're they're on alexa like blah 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 like all the countries talk together they share intelligence like all these different things and you know people would be like ah it's bullshit like it's a conspiracy like they don't care like they don't actually do that stuff and yeah. now it's come out that in fact they do do exactly all of those things they can hack your smart tv and they do hack your phones and they do have back doors into google and bing and you know can easily access your emails and um even like encrypted the thing that kind of got me was even the encrypted stuff like whatsapp and signal things that are end-to-end -end encrypted secure like whatsapp doesn't even have access they can access those before well, it it's encrypted doesn't matter yeah if i have malware on your phone yeah then if I'm recording all your data, I'm even getting your passwords as you're entering them. Yeah. Your encryption doesn't mean shit. It's also like once you open up that data, malware that's properly configured is going to see whatever you're seeing and have access to whatever you have access to. Mm. The, the thing I wanted to bring up is now... and. Maybe maybe they're doing this. Maybe it's maybe it's that people don't care. Maybe it's that you know that information is a little bit harder to find than you know before because you know Snowden was broadcast by every media major every major. I don't media think people but, generally care. But you know, like I stumbled upon this Vault Seven stuff, and that's crazy. This is like yeah. the most significant CIA leak ever. Yeah, and I didn't hear about it till I was. I've read an article about how the CIA considered killing Julian Assange. And I was like, well, what the fuck? And this did he file do? was last modified in 2017. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Um, do you think people. What I wanted to ask is do you think now that people know that these are the ways that things are done, do you think that they're more security conscious do you think they're changing how they do things or do you think they just i think most people are like it's the cia i can't stop them they're i have nothing to they're... hide right. i have nothing to hide so it doesn't affect me which is kind of i don't know it's kind of the wrong 
idea to have, right? Why is that? It's kind of like being a German during Nazi Germany and just being like, ah, I'm German, like, I'm, like, I have blonde hair and blue eyes. This, like, this kind of affects me, but it's not really, like, my problem. So I'm just gonna, like, play along and pretend it's not So how not do you think people should issue. be reacting then? Um, I think we should be asking we should be pushing for more privacy laws and to actually have ownership over our data like on social media if i'm on facebook that data i produce should i should have my i should have the ownership of it it shouldn't be facebook's right and that would be a huge change in the way things are done and that way people wouldn't be out to sell this data i mean if you wanted to sell your data sure they could implement options for that but don't do it secretly and behind people's backs have them own that their own data yeah that was another thing and if they have the option to sell it yeah people had thought that they were doing it but there wasn't proof and now now there's a paper trail that they do in fact sell your data yeah well, I mean, now they have made a lot of different things with the laws. Like, you'll see now, like, you have to accept certain cookies and you can choose not to accept, like, marketing and analysis cookies. Right. There are certain little steps like that, but, I mean, at the same time, there generally, we'd have to educate a lot of people to make them security conscious. So what about the flip side? Do you think that, because if you're looking at it from, you know, an intelligence perspective, I guess it goes. Like, how do you give goes, the whole world end user training, like end user security I, training? I, I'm more asking, like, realistically, um, most people aren't committing crime. Most people are going about their lives and they're yeah. not doing too much shady shit. But do you think that. Um, for the people that are, they should have more control over their stuff. Like, you know, most, like most of these things came about so that government would have an easier time tracking down these people, you know, and finding problems before they become significant. But that, that's under the assumption that the, the government's operating efficiently with the intention of the well-being of everyone you know which usually isn't the case they they're usually very inefficient and most of the initiatives are generally to benefit a small group of people at the end of the so day so i do agree that government is inefficient but do you think that you know the average analyst is out there with malicious intent no but like, i don't think small i don't think the scope benefited? i don't think the scope of the mission could generally like what what was the purpose of going to afghanistan for the u.s right is was that who who did that benefit i mean in the end like obviously it benefited no one but even like aside from the withdrawal and it going to shit like why were like why did they go there in the first place what was their intention was it to benefit us was it to benefit like the global security was it to benefit the afghani people it was probably to benefit a few people's repertoire their like record for their service potentially a few politicians like rap sheets so uh, resources here can we actually look up when did the i think it was in 2003 but look it up what when did the u.s enter afghanistan well, I want to say 2003. And I know everyone's talking about this. I'm not, I'm not I'm not going about this to beat a dead horse. I'm just Oh, 2001. Jesus. 20 years. Okay, so we simultaneously did Afghanistan the same time we did Iraq then. Uh cuz Iraq Did we do did Canada do Iraq as well? Um, we went there after. Yeah, not for the okay, initial. Okay, so hold invasion, on. Right? Okay, so no, so I was confused. Okay, so we went. Okay, so it's two different missions. Okay, so the reason that they went to Afghanistan was because of nine eleven, 
Because after 2001, um, Osama bin Laden claimed responsibility for the attacks. Um, and they knew that he was hiding out in Afghanistan. Um, he was part of Al-Qaeda and the Taliban ruled Afghanistan. So it was a simultaneous sweep. They removed the Taliban from the government because they didn't want a terrorist power in control while they were trying to, you know, dismantle a terrorist organization. And then they went about fucking up Al-Qaeda. That was the mission. The mission was to get Osama bin Laden. That's why we went to Afghanistan. To dismantle Al-Qaeda and to kill Osama bin Laden. And simultaneously, we also removed the Taliban from the power so that the people wouldn't be repressed. Okay, and after that was accomplished, when was that accomplished? Three months. In three months, they 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 removed the Taliban from government and they started dismantling Al Qaeda. Okay, and then at that point, what? Well, we didn't actually well, we didn't catch Osama till 2012 or 2013. Okay, but after that point, why continue? Okay, so we kill Osama in Pakistan because that's the the. Um, um, there was also the whole Haqqani network, but uh, Pakistan was like notorious for supporting the Taliban and Al Qaeda, and they would like let the terrorists go there and train and hide, and then they'd come back to Afghanistan. But anyways, okay, so we kill Osama in like 2013. Um, we did. We withdrawed most of the troops, and the only people that were still left in Afghanistan were there to facilitate the transition of government. Um, they were still trying to secure a peace deal between the Taliban and the Afghan government. Um, and they were still training soldiers. But we did reduce our forces significantly after we killed Osama. Um, the problem was the withdrawal, you know, because I think we had like still like probably ten to 20,000 troops in country. And then, you know, Rather than keeping like a couple thousand or withdrawing gradually or doing airstrikes or, you know, actually supporting the Afghan forces during the withdrawal or, you know, preemptively evacuating the embassies. They just kind of said like, ah, it'll be fine. You know, no worries. Iraq was a separate, was a separate mission. We went to Iraq to remove Saddam Hussein from power. And find weapons of mass destruction. Well, that was the claim. Obviously, there was no... Yeah. Weapons of mass destruction. We went there to secure our interests because um, obviously the states, the U.S. and Britain with BP, um, you know, have ties to, you know, Kuwait and Oman and Jordan and all these like, you know, oil producing nations. And, um, you know, Saddam had a, had invaded Kuwait at one point. Um, and he was, you know, getting very powerful and, um, he was starting not to, to listen. And so the States decided that it was in the best interest of, <laughs> it was in the best interest of, uh, you know, the oil interests of the region to, uh, remove him from power. I see. And by doing that, they also destroyed Iraq. So simultaneously, the states completely fucked Afghanistan, put the Taliban back in power after fucking over the country for like 20 years, and then also did the exact same shit in Iraq. We're still in Iraq. Hmm. Oh, still doing the same shit that we were doing in Afghanistan. And pretty good feeling that when they decide to fully remove troops from Iraq, it'll be the same shit. ISIS and... ISIC and, um, you know, all these groups will probably move in a little more than they have already. Super sick. That's too bad. Yeah. It is what it is, man. Honestly. Like, I was wondering if there'd be, like, a way to use cyber to, like, fuck shit up. But, I mean, I don't know. Ch China would be the main one to, to actually fuck up their... their the, I feel like they're the next coming evil. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, they already are fucking shit up overall, but... Mm. They're just gonna buy Canada out completely at, 
at some point. Why do you Did, say that? Have you like been to Vancouver before or like downtown like, Toronto? I mean, there's a lot of foreign money, but Canada's already like, you know, passed laws to prevent them from preventing too much foreign money from pouring in. It's a lot more difficult now. They're going to definitely just take the U.S.'s spot as, like, top controller. There are Russian schools teaching kids Chinese now. Like, that's, like... Yeah, but Russia has ties to everybody, right? Like, Russia has ties with Israel. They have ties with Syria. They have ties with China. They have ties with Iran. They have ties with with everybody. I feel like we shouldn't depend our trade on China. As much as we do, yeah. But when think when about this. The dub, think about what this. about them holding PPE? It, like think about this during the pandemic, unless people went with a certain narrative okay. about the lab. What do you think the biggest export of Canada is? Probably like lumber or something. Or oil, oil, yeah, oil. and cars. Okay, Britain, the United Kingdom. Their top three exports are cars, uh, and then um, electronics. Britain? Yep. Mm. The U.S. main exports are equipment, electronics, cars, then oil. You know what China's main export is? Everything to do with manufacturing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're top... They, they literally don't sell minerals. It's consumer electronics, consumer parts, manufacturing, tools, cars... Well, it's because they have cheap Textiles. Labor right, so if you... If all the big nations in the world's only export is fucking oil and cars and natural resources, how can they compete? We're not manufacturing. We're not With manufacturing automation, at that we level. can. It's the investment. No one wants to invest here. Mm, I'd say... There's not the, enough incentive. It's just not enough incentive. Why spend, you know, 22... Let's say 19. Why spend $19 an hour um, paying a factory worker here in the U.S.? Versus spending four dollars an hour paying a factory worker in China. That's like marked up too. There's no way it costs that much. No, right? Why? Why would you do that? There's no point. Because then you're self-sufficient and you can't be fucked over by a foreign power. I mean, I guess so, but, like, the foreign power has no incentive to, to fuck you over. The they foreign, clearly have. The foreign power If you're holding economy, medical right? equipment, unless countries go along with the narrative that it wasn't from a lab leak or whatever, like... Yeah, but that was more political, right? They're not going to stop you. F- they're... As soon as you depend on someone for something and they force you to do something, like... Do you not see how that's fucked up? Right, but like, you know, China's not withholding Huawei phones because fucking the C- CTO is being held in Canada for three years. They just detained two Canadians. Yeah. So I'm saying the manufacturing economy is not going to change. They're just going to... But I guess your point is still valid. Like, they still will always hold that over your head. Yeah. As long as you depend on them. And it's not like... We're dealing with, like, nice, friendly, like, allies. They're true. China. True. That's true. That's true. So, how was sparring for your first time? <laughs> uh, I got beat up. Um... How did it compare to what you expected going in versus reality? What do you think was going to happen and what happened? I think at heart, I've um, I've never really been one to enjoy conflict. 
Um, and anytime I've been in a fight, my brain's been off. You know, it's been just... How know. many fights have you been in prior? Do you know the number? Um, four or five. Um, none of them are really that intense. Like, the only one that was, like... There was one where... It was close to getting broken out into fists. Like we were in the hallway and just like slamming each other into the walls. And we finally like got loose from each other. And like we were about to start throwing and then it got broken up. Um, and then there was another time where I let this kid probably punch me in the face like 50 fucking times. Like I swear to God, like I don't really remember the situation. And he had like those like blue like gloves on. You know, so there was like a little bit of padding, but I just remember he was just throwing combos on me for like five minutes, just like, just like wailing on my face. And I just like, I don't know what the fuck was wrong with me, but I kept just egging him on. I was like, oh, like, that's all you got? Like, you fucking pussy? Like, that, like, that's all you can do? And I just kept fucking egging him on. And he must have hit me, like, I swear to God, like 50 or 60 times in the face. And I just like, I just, I was just a wall. I just didn't move, but I just kept, like, shitting on his day. And he just started crying. It was so bad that he's just, like, wailing on me, and I'm, like, not doing anything. Uh. And then finally, he, like, hits me. And I remember I just pushed him, and he went, like, fucking flying. And I, like, wanted to start throwing, but I was just like, nah, like, it's not even worth it. And I just, like, went inside. I remember I just, like, started crying. And then I went to the office and my hands were shaking and I talked to my brother about it after. And he's like, yeah, he's like, if you would have hit that kid when your hands were shaking, he's like, you probably would have knocked him out. He's like, that's like when you're like, like fully your like, adrenaline just kicked in. Yeah. Yeah. So that was like the only like two real ones, but, and I've gotten in fights with my brother and there was this one time on the bus I don't know what it was. Man, I used to beat the shit out of kids on the bus, man. I remember there was, like, this one fat kid behind me. He used to, like, talk mad shit to just everyone. But, like, every once in a while, he'd just, like, work up the courage to talk some shit my way. I'd just, like, stand up, like, turn to him, be like, what'd you say? And just, like, fucking, like, beat the fuck out of him right there on the bus. And then he'd just, like fucking like be like slumped down like between the seats or something like a a little more tender and i just like sit back down and continue whatever i was doing yeah that was me there's this one kid he's in he's in jail now um wild dude he was my neighbor i'm gonna tell you a little bit about him first it's actually kind of a wild story so this fucking guy actually was like the dude who got me drunk for my first time ever which is a really crazy story in itself. So I, I, I'm biking home from work and I'm almost at my house and I like pull into like my neighbor's house and he's got this massive party going on. And he's like, yo, like you should just like stop in. And I like looked and like, I was like, yeah, my parents don't really know I'm off yet. Like I'll just like go and just tell them I'm coming to your house. So, or no, I think they weren't home. So I think I just hung out at his house. And he had a bottle of, like, Canadian club or whatever. Like, that. I didn't know anything about alcohol. The only thing I had ever had was beer and 7-Up that my uncle used to sneak me in Mexico and, like, whatever. So, this was, like, a big first time for me. I didn't know anything. So, he's like, like, go mix yourself a drink. So, I, like, poured probably, like, two ounces and then some Coke. Uh, I drank it and was just like, okay, like this is alcohol, I guess. I swear to fucking God, I had like six or seven within an hour. I had no idea whether what I was drinking was good or bad. I like wasn't feeling anything right away. I didn't understand that alcohol, like a delayed, like a especially with harder liquors. I right. Find. It takes a bit. Yeah. It takes like a half hour. Yeah. So I downed like six or seven, probably doubles or triples. Like I like poured like half alcohol and then the rest because I just, I didn't yeah. taste it. I didn't know what I was drinking. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, it was just like, 
I was so fucking drunk and like just like that and everything's like stop motion all of a sudden and everything's like stuttered the same thing happened when i mixed um um ritalin and weed for the first time that that was i thought i was gonna die uh, that was not a fun time but everything was like stop motion i remember picking up my phone and texting this like girl that i liked like i'm so fucking drunk like blah, whatever and like set that off and he like sees me it's been like an hour and he's like whoa he's like buddy like you're fucked he's like you need to slow down and like this guy used to take uh rips of oil out of a bong okay okay like motor oil yeah like these guys were what f- kind like w540 <laughs> like, <laughs> what's a good motor oil to smoke out of the bong these guys did like b and e's and shit they'd like go on the the fucking snowmobile like drunk and like their dads would like fly off into trees like these dudes were fucked okay and he's tell they'd get he'd get in like fist fights with his dad and they'd break plates over each other's head and shit like they were fucked. He's, like, adopted, and his dad was, like, the 70-year-old, like, retired ice road pilot trucker dude. Like, just this big, white-bearded, white-haired dude that just, like, beat the fuck out of people and welded for a living. Like, he didn't give a shit, so he just beat the shit out of him all the time. And he's telling me I need to slow down. Okay? So, I'm like, alright, like, I should probably slow down. So, I, like, pour myself a Coke. And then this dude, like, comes up to me, and he's like... Yo, like, what are you drinking? And I, like, give him it. He drinks it. He spits it out. He's like, the fuck is this? I'm like, oh, it's like Coke. Like, Will told me I should, like, slow down. And he's like, no, like, fuck that. Like, go pour yourself another drink. Like, he was obviously just, like, wanting to see me lose my shit. So I pour my, I'm like, oh, okay. So I, like, pour myself another drink. And I'm sitting in, like, an eight-year-old camping chair. Like, like for eight year olds, like it's tiny. Like I'm two feet off the ground. Like I'm maybe a foot off the ground. Like it was a fucking tiny ass chair and I'm sitting on this chair and I remember getting like halfway through the drink and all of a sudden like shit started spinning and I just fell face forward and just blah, just like everywhere. And he's like, yo, and he's like, what the fuck? Like you're puking on my yard. And I'm like crawling to the bush my hat falls off and I puke in there and they're like ah like he's fucked there's a picture of them pulling up my sweaters and drawing a fucking huge dick on my back while I'm vomiting into my hat in his bush and I'm like fuck like I couldn't even stand up I was so fucked up an hour into this party I'm so fucked up I can't walk so these two dudes like pick me up by both arms and like luckily i live next door so they just kind of like drag me home and i'm just crying i'm like oh like i'm so sorry like i didn't mean to ruin your fucking party man like i can't i can't stand up (laughs) so they like they literally carry me inside and like take my shoes off and like get me into my bed and they call my parents and my parents were like they literally just sat down at the restaurant and like their food had just came Like, they were out on a double date, and they get this phone call from this random dude, like, your son is so fucked up, you can't walk. So I just remember, I'm, like, asleep, and I wake up, and I just remember, first it was my brother, and he, like, he was just, like, and I just remember being, like, uh, and then just dozing back off, and then I woke back up. And it's my parents standing in my doorway with their arms crossed, just shaking their head. And then I went back to sleep. It was like a movie, you know, you like wake up and someone's yelling, go to sleep. You like wake up again. It's just like disappointed, like shakes of disapproval. And then I just like woke up again and it was morning. And I was like still dressed and I was so fucked. And I had to go to work the next day. And I remember calling my boss and being like, look, like I can't walk. You need to wait till like noon. (laughs) And they're just like, okay. (laughs) I was, my legs like didn't work till like 10 o'clock. Like it was eight in the morning and I couldn't stand up. Like Uh I physically could not get out of bed. I was so fucking hungover. Uh So anyways, this guy is in jail now. He tried to escape. He found out that his, like, girl was, like, cheating. So he tried to escape by stealing the prison van. 
and obviously didn't fucking get away because he stole a prison van. Yeah. And now he's in maximum security. Ah. Uh, lovely. What, what was the point of this story? I don't know. I was I was telling you about this man for a reason. What did you ask me? Oh, something about fighting. fighting yeah. Right. Okay. So I don't remember what happened. He was just like talking shit, and he like said something about my grandpa. And I don't know. I must have just been having a day. And I'm just like, "Fuck you!" And I just like socked him in the mouth. And he was like, "Nah." <laughs> and he just got up and just started fucking wailing on me. And I just remember just like eating punches. And my older brother was on the bus, so he came and just like threw him off. And then we got off the bus, and my brother like threw me into a giant ice puddle and just told me to go fuck myself. And then that was that. Lovely. So, so the point of this story is I've never been in a real fight. So having someone chase me throwing punches and me having to like fight back is a new thing for me. So I'm learning. How did you find our sparring match? Scary. <laughs> Why? Um, it's just a lot, man. It's like, it's a very different experience trying to like think while you're getting like hit, you know? Yeah. Because it's not normal. No. Humans aren't trained like that. We're fucking animals. Like if you fucking sock a dog in the mouth it's not gonna think about the angle it should attack you it's just gonna fucking attack you it's just gonna jump on you and bite you and if you throw it around it's just gonna keep coming till it physically can't like it's just gonna fuck up your day it's not gonna think about like bobbing and weaving and like pivoting the foot at the right angle so for like me to turn off my caveman brain while i'm getting hit in the face is very it's like a very different skill I would say the thinking comes in short bursts. It would be like you plan, but like, do you think it's your you combo. It's mostly instinct. I would say it's like your training, like like your combos that you do most will come to you naturally in a fight. So like if you hit the bag with, I don't know, like jab straight, uh, like front hook, and then like lower hook, upper hook. If you just do that a hundred times on the bag. I, I'm almost certain when a fight comes up, you're going to throw something along those lines. You might not complete the whole combo, but you'll get part of that. And like excluding the jab straight. Cause that's like every, like, that's just not really a combo, you know? But like, if you just keep throwing like longer and longer combos, then you just get trained to, to throw those instinctually almost. And you have to. No, like the planning comes where your footwork well i don't know most of my planning comes in footwork and in closing distance i'd say because i know like what combos i have right what distance you're at and what position you're at so then how do i close that distance is my main concern right i want to show you something yeah ryan garcia i've seen that before like behind the back and everything look how fast he's going man and like look at his eyes like it's just like jeez like he's an animal dude would you spar him? Um. Oh, where's that video? Um. Also, he's like friends with Canelo, and Canelo's like the greatest boxer to fucking ever walk this earth. So. I uh I wouldn't know. Like look at this here. Those those belly pads are nicer. I want to get one of those at some point. It would be a lot nicer than the Taekwondo one. 
you know, you'd be able to take more shots. Like, he's not a big guy. So, like, the power he generates is pretty insane, you know? Like, he's maybe 160. Look how thick that pad is. Like, fuck, that's gotta hurt. Look how hard he's hitting him, man. Like, that, just that power is crazy. You wanna put the chest rig on and get a shot on on podcast? I'll, I'll Ray hook I've you. I've taken one. I'll Ray hook you. I ate one before, I'm good. With, with a glove. I ate one before. With a glove? Not with a glove. You probably for the hit, podcast. You'll probably hit harder with the glove. Is that for how the we're podcast? End it? Yeah. I'm gonna throw the bag on, and it's just gonna be the audio of me getting fucking clocked. Yeah. Okay, I'll POV it. Let's do it. All right. All right. How how are we gonna set up the mic? Uh, you can still cardioid hear it. to that way. Sure. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. What? This is gonna fucking hurt. Like this is gonna ruin my evening. No, it'll be blast. I think you just miss having someone to beat up. What do you mean? I think you just like want to have someone you can refund. We should get a proper one. Like this isn't made to take a body shot. It's, like, for Taekwondo competitions, but, yeah. Like, we should get one of those. Which one? Oh, yeah, the belly pad things. Yeah, they're, like, 70 bucks on Amazon. Okay, apparently I need to, like, delete shit on my phone. Too many pictures or some dumb shit. Alright. You ready? Hold on. Fans of Moonbase, this is what you came for. Gonna turn the gain up so you can hear us nice. Oh wait, other way? Yeah, that's it. Okay, hold on. It's gonna be a nice hit. Okay, give me your phone. My phone's being a bitch. Fuck. Why am I, why am I agreeing to do this? Cause you're a man. If I drop your phone, I'm sorry, but I might crumple. Okay. You gotta turn it into a video. Yeah. Alright, we're we're eating a punch. Uh wait, I'll just start it here. Okay, we got the uh the body bag on. Got the glove on. It's not sponsored by Venom, but we're wearing their gear. Venom, it's on you to sponsor us. Alright, wait, turn this side, like face that way, yeah. Ready? No. Three, two, Nice. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah.
Thanks for tuning in to the Moon Base Podcast. We got lots of stuff upcoming. Best way to keep in touch and keep track is to follow us on social media. Check us out on Instagram at the Moon Base. Check us out on TikTok, the Moon Base Podcast. You can check out our Patreon. We got a website, themoonbase.org. Check us out on YouTube. We got exclusive content, skits, all kinds of stuff coming. We got lots of new guests. Also, if you think you would be good on the Moonbase podcast, if you would like to be interviewed, if you got something to say, DM us. Shoot us a shot on uh, Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear from our fans. Thank you so much for tuning in.